Alright, what's up everybody? Back with another episode of Everyday Hoops. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to start, we're going to talk about yesterday's All-Star Saturday night. Uh, some of the contest winners and some things that we can make improvements on because, you know, it wasn't perfect. Uh, we're going to talk about tonight's NBA All-Star game and my MP MVP prediction. Uh, we're going to get into some more news around the league and then we're going to get into some college basketball and talk about the games that I saw. Uh, yesterday so yeah let's get right into it we're starting yesterday NBA All-Star Saturday night shout out to the NBA for, for putting on the performance like they always do and yeah uh, so the first one was the NBA Skills Challenge where the Team Jazz won so I guess from now on every time you bet on All-Star Weekend put your money on the team that is um hosting Last year, it was in Cleveland, and Team Cleveland won the Skills Challenge. This year's in Utah. Team Utah won the Skills Challenge. So, uh, I guess next year, put it on Team Indiana. <laughs> um, if it's still like this. Because we got to talk about the Skills Challenge and the format. Because, I mean, last year was cool. You know, it was fun, the new format. This year, they used the same format. But it was just, it wasn't good, to be honest. It wasn't, it's not entertaining. You know, the Skills Challenge has never been something super entertaining. But at least it was, like, watchable. This year was kind of like, I kind of didn't really care about the skill. Like, I literally just didn't care to watch the skill challenge. I was like, all right, I would just wait till the three-point contest. Because it was just so, like, there's so much going on, so much chaos and stuff going on that it's like, what is what is happening? You know? Um, Yeah, we got to fix the skill challenge. And I was thinking of ways of how we can improve the skills challenge. To make it at least a little bit more entertaining. So I project. Um, a lot of my ideas are going back to maybe some of the old format. With no teams. Just players by themselves. We do you know the passing shooting dribbling stuff. But make some slight adjustments to it you know. So the passing maybe. We can have instead of just one pass in the middle. You have three different of those little big things they have to pass in. You have one chest pass. A bounce pass and then maybe I don't know what the third one would be maybe like a one-handed pass or like a flashy pass no look pass something like that um, I think that would be better you know you gotta shuffle down so for chest pass and you gotta bounce it shuffle down get the ball bounce pass and you gotta shuffle down get it and maybe do like a no look or a fancy a flashy pass in there you know and then the, the shooting drill maybe instead of just one three-pointer or one layup you can do like kind of like a from every spot. You know how fans do it at like the NBA games where they have you need one layup, one mid range, one three point shot. You know? Like they should do it like that. Like the player you get one layup, you got step back, hit a free throw line shot, step back again, hit a mid range, then step back again, hit a three pointer. All in order. And then dribbling. Instead of just dribbling around cones, whatever, you have to like kinda like the passing thing where you have to like do a certain dribble. So you do uh just a regular crossover. Then the next one you have to do a between the legs. And the next one you have to do a behind the back. Something like that. Try to make it a little bit more skill involved. Where like you have to, you know, get, you know, you don't just have to dribble, 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 pass once. Like it's like you have to do a certain comp, a certain thing every time you come up, you know. And you have to make make a certain pass when you come up. And make certain shots when they come up, you know. And all this in order. And I was thinking maybe we can add something else to the skills instead of just passing, shooting, and dribbling. A defensive drill, maybe? Because skills challenge, you have to have, it's about who has the best all around skills, you know? So maybe you can have maybe a defensive drill in a way. I don't know how you would do it. Maybe like you have to close out on a shooter without fouling, or maybe you have to like not let, not let someone score on you. Like you have just another person there. And you have to stop them from scoring. Like a little mini one-on-one, -on -one, one possession one-on-one -on -one type of thing, I would think. I don't really know how you fully incorporate that into it. But maybe some sort of defensive drill in it as well. Just to show who's the best all-around skill. But I think that's the best way you have to do it, you know. Just make it have more skills involved, have more stuff involved. You know, a little bit more, make it a little bit more... Um, you have to think a little bit more. You have to pay attention a little bit more. You know, such so as dribbling around some cone, pass it through a hoop once, come down, lay up, 
It's just like, you know, make it, make it a little more intricate and a little bit more, you know, you have to have a lot of certain skills. Um, but yeah, that's the only way I, I, that's the way I thought of fixing the skills challenge, you know, to make it more entertaining. But I don't know, maybe there's some other suggestions out there that I just haven't thought of yet or haven't seen yet. Um, I'm sure there is. They're a lot better. But yeah, we got to improve the skills challenge. The skills challenge is kind of like the, like the the one that no one can, the one that people kind of just skip through and be like, uh, wait, let me wait till a three-point contest comes up. Um, and speaking of three-point contest, that was very entertaining. Um, Damian Lillard ultimately ended up winning the three-point contest um, in the Weber State jersey, the custom. I should have known. I should have known as soon as he pulled up with that custom Weber State jersey, I should have known. That he was gonna win this. I mean, he had a really good first round, and in the second round, he just kind of. I mean, he turned. He was on fire. He was Dame, and even that that starry three point shot where it's like the deep deep three. The first one he made, he made it, and didn't even like wait to see it go in. He made it. He shot it, and then just started running to the other rack. Cause he knew he was like, "Yep, that's going in." Um, but yeah, he should have known as soon as he pulled up in the custom Weber State Dame Dollar jersey. Should have known he was gonna win. Also, number one. I don't know. Number one just looks so weird. It seemed, Damian Lillard just is a number zero. You no, know, with jersey wear that it, seeing him in, in any other number just looks odd. So seeing him in number one looked weird. But, yeah, shout out to him for winning. Tyrese Halliburton was great um, in the first the first round. He had, like, what, 31 in the first round. He was, he was doing really good. Um, and then, of course, you know, second round he kind of... Um, cooled off he sat for a while too he was like the second or third person up and then didn't go he and then he was the last person to shoot um in the second round so he had like what like five seven people go before him so he kind of cooled down a little bit but he showed a great performance in his jump shot he probably has one of the craziest jump shots in the league when you look at it like it's like it's like a hitch and it's like his arm is like kind of like turned like his wrist his arm isn't like fully extended, like straight. It's like there's a t curve. Like his shooting arm, he kind of, it kind of like it's curved. His arm in a way, but it works, you know. So you can't really fault him for it. But it's just very odd. Like why? And then it's like really set. It's like you can't just grab it and just pull it. Like he has to grab it, have his feet set, and do a little, oop, and do a little load up and shoot. It's like a set. It's a set shot. It's a set shot. Um, but it works, man. It it works. So. Well, how can you say, you know, how can you fault it? You know, Buddy Hill was also in the final round, the Indiana boys, and now the Indiana boys won. Um, yeah, uh, Kevin Herter, man. My, it was my prediction to win the three-point contest. And thank God I didn't put any money on it, and I can't put money on it. Because, bro, eight points? Eight. Eight, po eight. eight points. Eight points in a three-point contest. You could hit two starry three-point shots and have six. Like, bro had eight points? Yeah, I'm never I'm never putting money on... I'm never betting on a Sacramento Kings player. That's just what it is. I'm not putting money on a Sacramento Kings player. I don't... I'm, and it wasn't even the whole Sacramento Kings. It was just Kevin Herter plays for the Kings. So I'm not I'm not doing anything for the Kings anymore. That, that was... Yeah, that, that sucked. Um, some other funny moments. Julius Randle's son, after he finished, Julius Randle's son was just kind of like, Dang, Dad, really? Like, come on, bro. <laughs> you can you can at least try. Like he he didn't yeah. But he was also last minute and was very a very odd name on the list, so I guess you kinda give him a little bit of a pass, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, three point contest was good. And now we get to the dunk contest and boy, Mac McClung, man. Can we get a round of applause for Mac McClung, man? He was, he put on a show. One of the most entertaining dunk contests in the, in the past, in the recent years. Um, he might have just saved the dunk contest. Like, he was so entertaining watching him out there. His first dunk was, like, well, honestly, his first dunk was the most impressive to me. Like, to jump over a dude, standing on another dude, grabbing the ball, and then not only just dunking it, but to tap the backboard and dunk it from the side was even more like whoa like that's how we're starting we're starting with that <laughs> um yeah but he was incredible 
Um, just he floats through the air, man. He really does just float through the air. He has a lot of creative ideas. Um, he even repped his own high school, the Gate City jersey, where his last dunk was fire. Um, yeah, he flat out just deserved it. And the funny thing is, it wasn't like the other three were just kind of like doing whatever. Like Trey Murphy actually made it to the final. Trey Murphy actually did a lot better than I thought. Like he can definitely fly. Like, he's got some ups. Um, he's not like a creative dunker, but he he's got ups. He can he can jump, you know. But they just no one really could stand stand up to Pat McClung. Uh, Jericho Sims loves putting his arm in the rim for some reason. I think both his dunks he put his arms in the rim. I don't know why, but I guess he just wanted to show that he get get that high up, and he can really, especially for a big man, like for a six eleven, six ten dude to get up like that and have your head above the rim. You know, because a lot of big men are six ten, six eleven, but and they can dunk, but they're not like athletic dunkers. They're more like you can dunk because you're seven feet dunk kind of dunk, but he can actually like get up there. But yeah, big men in a dunk contest just aren't. You're already at a disadvantage, just because big men dunking. You're kind of a little bit more limited than guards, and it just doesn't look as cool. Like, Jericho Sims could do the same dunk that Mac McClung did, and it, Mac McClung's would look a whole lot better just because Jericho Sims is so big that it's like, you know, it just doesn't it just doesn't, doesn't look the same. Unless you're, like, super, like, freaky athletic, like the White Howard level athletic first center, where it's like, you're center, but you're, like, you're crazy athletic, and then that's good, but... If you're just like regular ish athletic center, then you're probably not winning the dunk contest because it's just it just doesn't look as cool, honestly. It just doesn't look as cool as when a when a little with a six three, six four guard does it. You know, it just doesn't look as cool. Um But yeah, Mag McClung, definitely his name is now known. His name is already kinda known because of his high school um legend legendary videos and stuff like that. But now the NBA world knows his name. Maybe, hopefully, he gets an opportunity maybe somewhere. Maybe the Sixers give him an opportunity somewhere. Maybe another team, you know, maybe next year gives him an opportunity. But, yeah, definitely his name definitely got put on notice. Especially after he had a really good Rising Stars um, game as well where he was hitting some threes. And then to, have, to win the dunk contest in that kind of fashion. Um, his name definitely is on notice, and everyone knows who Mac McClung is, if they didn't know already. Um, but yeah, that was great. Really good, overall entertaining, all-star weekend. Um, definitely some improvements can be made, but um, with it itself, that three-point contest, dunk contest, it was it was good. It was entertaining, you know? Thank you, Mac McClung, for saving the dunk contest. And yeah, it was really, it was really, it was, it was fun, you know? But the one thing. One thing, if I can add just one thing to the to the All Star Saturday night, we need a one on one challenge. We need we need it. I feel like we need it, man. Ever since I've heard the idea the first time, I just can't get it out of my head, bro. A one on one challenge at the All Star weekend with the stars in it, like who would not love to see that? When you, if you have like Jason Tatum and Kevin Durant and Anthony L all in the one on one challenge, like how what would it work? Um, it would probably be like a tournament based thing, maybe. Uh, you got like f six, six or eight players, and it's like the first one to, to seven in a one on one wins, and then you keep going to whoever wins. Um, champion, you know, crowned as the best one on one player in the league, you know, that would that would get some that would get some stars in it if it's like best one on one player in the league type of stuff or maybe it's more of like a king of the court where it's like they just keep going around and around and around whoever the first one to get like 10 wins you have like 8 or 10 people or whatever and the first first person to get 10 points wins um the king of the court but I think we need that man that would be so fun the people would be locked in on that man I don't know I would watch that I would I would, I would only watch that I wouldn't even care about the 3 pointer dunk contest anymore if we got the one on one challenge going to the king of the court challenge going that would be we need it man we need it man adam silver adam silver man pull some strings make some stuff happen man come on we, we need this we need this um yeah but tonight we got the nba all-star game 
Um, the draft is happening right before the All-Star Game. Team Giannis, Team LeBron um, are going to be choosing their teams. Um, yeah, very excited to see the draft. Who gets picked last, I guess. I, honestly, there's a lot of talk about who gets pick, picked last. And Adam Silver kind of being like, you know, we should pick the reserves first maybe and then the starters. But honestly, like, who cares? You got picked last. Oh, no, you're the worst out of all the players that are the top 24. <laughs> In the NBA, like, yeah, you don't want to be picked last because you get made fun of and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, dude is still an all star. <laughs> like, he's still an all star, and he's still like a top twenty five player in the league. So it's like, really, you're gonna be upset? Oh no, I'm t the twenty third best player. Oh no, like, who cares, man? And it's fun. It's funny. It's fun too. It's like all the players kind of don't want to be picked last but then they're also like we want to see someone get picked last though so it's it's fun it's just good fun man no, the person that gets picked last is going to take it as like oh my god they, they, don't, they think I suck Ugh, I'm going to be mad the entire week like who cares man just go out there and it's for fun you know someone's got to be picked someone has to be picked last like it's just how it works someone has to be picked last like you can't pick like four people at once like someone has to be technically pick last so it's like who cares but anyway yeah we got the all-star game tonight LeBron and Giannis going to be captains um and yeah we're going to see who wins all-star MVP and now my prediction all-star MVP prediction my 2023 NBA all-star game MVP is Donovan Mitchell I'm predicting Donovan Mitchell um why um, he was the first name that popped in my head. But also, you got the storyline of him coming back to Utah. His first year as an all-star game starter. Back in Utah. Having this amazing season. Utah fans are going to show him a lot of love. And maybe he comes out here and puts on a, a nice performance. You know, I feel like out of all the starters that would take this game kind of seriously, Donovan would. Donovan would take this game a little bit more seriously than all the other starters. Yeah, I don't know. I just... That, that's my gut feeling. I'm going with Donovan Mitchell back in Utah one more time uh, to give them an All-Star Game MVP. Um, other players I would like to see win. These aren't my predictions, but I would like to see win. Larry Marketing at home. I mean, that would be funny. Larry Marketing winning an All-Star Game MVP. Anthony Edwards already came out and said he wants to go get that award as a huge little placement. And I can definitely see him um, getting the award. But yeah, those are my top three people I see winning it, but Donovan Mitchell is my prediction. I think he's winning All-Star Game MVP today. Um, is it going to happen? Maybe, probably not. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, it's a fun little prediction. You know? Um, yeah, Donovan Mitchell. Book it. Um, next we're going a little bit of some news that broke not too long ago. Kevin Love is officially signing with the Miami Heat. Um, yesterday he completed his contract by with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, he also talked to the Philadelphia 76ers as well. But ultimately, he ended up going to Miami, which was expected. I mean, it's the, it makes a lot of sense. The Heat needs some more backup big play uh, and some shooting. And Kevin Love will go to a team where he actually is going to get some minutes on. Um, yeah, I love the signing for Miami. Um, Kevin Love, uh, the Cavs also came out and said that Kevin Love will get his jersey number tied, which only makes sense. He's done so much for the Cavaliers franchise. One of the better players in their history. Um, stayed, won the championship, stayed throughout the turmoil with LeBron leaving. Um, and gave it all, really, to Cleveland. And we'll only wish him the best in Miami. And can't wait to see that number zero in the rafters. Um, but Miami might not be done also making moves, you know. There's reports saying that Cody Zeller, potentially tomorrow, will also be signing with the Miami Heat. Um, yeah, I mean, he just need players. <laughs> really, they traded away Dwayne Demon. They haven't really had a power forward this whole year. So now they're getting Kevin Love, and then they're getting another backup center in Cody Zeller. Um, boy, I forgot he's even playing in the league this year. Um, I know last year he was in Portland, and then this year I think he was on the Jazz training camp roster, but then he got cut. So he's just been chilling. Um, and yeah, he's going to be making an NBA comeback on the Miami Heat. Um, yeah, just another, just a solid backup center, I guess. You know, that's, that's all the Heat really need is just some players on their roster. Um, 
So yeah, that's another one. Cody, Cody Zeller, and Kenlin Love going to go to Miami. And for our last topic today, we're gonna talk about some college basketball, some of the games and moments I saw from yesterday. Um, very packed day in college basketball. Saturday always is. But yeah, we had some really good games. Uh, first game we had was I watched the ending of the Notre Dame versus Virginia game. Virginia coming in number seven ranked in the nation. Uh, Notre Dame kind of struggling this year. And I watched the end of this game. The end of this game was um, it was a very good end. You know, um, Notre Dame just stood in there with Virginia really the whole game. You know. Um, yeah, it was really, really good. Kihei Clark, their starting point goal. He's been there forever. I think he's like, he's got to be a senior, right? I remember seeing him years ago with like Kyle Guy and them, and he was on the bench. And now he's their star player. I would assume. I think he's their best player. I'm not fully 100 percent sure. But yeah, he had some big shots and some free throws to kind of seal this game. Uh, he had two free throws to make it a few point game with 22 seconds left. Nordine comes down, um, misses a three, but then they foul. Jaden Gardner of Virginia. Virginia, he misses the free throw. Virginia comes down, gets fouled. Um, Trey Trey Wirtz goes to the free throw line. He makes the first, misses the second, but then they get the offensive rebound. It kicks it out to Dane Goodwin, their sharpshooter, who had an amazing look at the buzzer and misses. If he would have hit that shot, he would have. They would have upset Virginia, but he misses, and Virginia gets a fifty-seven to fifty-five win over Notre Dame. Who now falls to ten and seventeen on the year, and Virginia Cavaliers are twenty one and four. Um, it's a great game, great ending to this game. Um, yeah, Notre Dame and Notre Dame almost did it. Dane Goodwin was almost there. Um, next, I watched the ESPN game of Illinois and Indiana. Indiana coming in number fourteen ranked, and this was an amazing game to watch. You know, um, the first half was very tight. The first half, uh, Coleman Hawkins. Was playing really good. Matthew Mayer, Mayer, as well. He had 16 first half points. He was doing really good. Um, the Indiana Trace Jackson Davis is just a monster, man. He really is. He's a monster down there. He had an amazing all around game, especially in the second half. He was hitting so many clutch shots um, to keep the team in the lead. Um, but Matthew Meyer and Coleman Hawkins also were really, you know, um, playing really well fighting this game um Tracy Jackson Davis made a dunk with seven seconds left to kind of seal the game up by three but then the Illinois Indian um man man nah, so many eyes Illinois comes down and I don't remember all their names but the dude from Indiana was guarding him and then the other dude on the on the that was guarding the player on the wing just comes over and doubles him and leaves his man wide open um Melendez wide open with like three seconds left and he Melendez I got a good shot off but he just missed it but if he would have made that shot, that play on Indiana would have got cussed out. Because what do you do? Why are you doubling him and you're leaving the shooter wide open? We're up by three with like three seconds left. What are you doing? Um, but good thing Melendez missed. The dude that was originally guarding the ball hitter from Indiana stepped over and made a good contest. But yeah, Indiana wins with 71-68. to 68. Uh, Tracy Jackson Davis finishes with 26-12 and 12 with three steals and five blocks. He was dominant. Uh, Jalen Hood Shafino, who is a... Uh, uh, projected lottery pick, and he's very smooth. I watched him. He's very, very smooth guard. He had 13 and 7. Didn't shoot well in this game. Shot just 5 for 17. But I think he, he, he's got some potential. He's a very smooth uh, guard. Um, for, for Illinois, Matthew Meyer at 24 and 8 with 5 blocks. Um, he was doing amazing. He was having a really good game. Getting a lot more opportunity. He was in Baylor, but then he Went over to Illinois, got a lot more opportunity, and he's been, he's had some games this year. He's had some really good games uh, this year, and he had another great game uh, yesterday. Uh, Connecticut beat Seen Hall. Shout out to um, Andre Jackson. Andre Jackson is really just like a big energy dude. You know, he kind of reminds me of like, this isn't a great comparison, but just when I saw him, this kind of reminds me of this dude. It's shades of like maybe a Caleb Martin. Which is a very weird, weird comparison. I understand that. But just kind of like that type of mold. Or type of play style. Where it's like he's not really going to get the offense. And he's going to run. He's going to be more of a role player. 
the focus is more maybe on the defensive end. He's a very good defender. Um, but then on offense, just is always like in the always cutting, getting in the right spots. You know, dunking on everybody. Keelan Martin can dunk. He's not like a crazy athletic dunk on everybody, but he kind of reminds me of that kind of mold ish player. Andre Jackson does. Um, yeah, I think he's gonna have a very solid career. But yeah, he had fifteen to ten, and Jordan Hawkins with twenty. He's been killing it this year as well. Um, and then we had another an upset, number ten Tennessee taking out Kentucky. And Kentucky could chose the game the whole way through, up six six fifty four. They were up by twenty in the first half. I thought they was gonna make it a game. Um, Vescovy, um, was really trying to keep him in this game. And then Kentucky, um, kind of just you know stopped any chance of that happening. Kaysen Wallace had a great game, 16-6-6. Six, six. Their starting guard, he's been rising up against a potential draft to look at. Um, Oscar Shibwe, 16-7. And, and then Jacob Toppin, Obi Toppin's little brother, had 11 points. But yeah, Kentucky really just controlled the game the whole, whole way through. Um, they forced Tennessee to shoot 37% from the field and 22% from three. Um... They played a really good game. Vescovy has 17 for Tennessee. But yeah, Kentucky really could just control the game all the way through. Um, next, we had another ESPN game. Um, Iowa State, Kansas State. Um, it was a really good game. Iowa State coming in 19th ranked. Kansas State 12th ranked. Um, it was a really good first half. Iowa State was up 31-23 in the first half. But then the second half happens, and Kansas State kind of just blows the game open a little bit. Well, not blow it open, but... They kind of take control at the end. Uh, Desi Sills, Trey, um, Keontae Johnson, Marquise Noel. They kind of seal this game. And Kansas State wins 61-55. to uh, Marquise Noel at 20. Him and Keontae Johnson have been an amazing duo this year. They combined for 35 points um, yesterday. Um, and they and they win 61-55. Another good win. Uh, forced Iowa State to 31% shooting. They shot just 5 for 27 from 3 and forced 15 turnovers. So, yeah, um, Kansas State played really good. Kansas State's been really good this year. Kansas State's been really good. Keontae Johnson and Marquis Snow have been a really good duo this season. Um, yeah, Kansas State Wildcats, man. Uh, Texas also beat Oklahoma in an overtime match. Texas coming in number 6 rank. Oklahoma uh, coming in at 500. Um, and it was Grant Sherfield. Grant Sherfield hit a three pointer. Um, with um. Oh my God, I can't think. I can't can't think. Right now, what's going on? Um, he hit a three pointer with six seconds left to tie the game at seventy three. After some free throws, also by Oklahoma, Tennessee. I mean Texas, missing um of some threes. We go to overtime to Tyrese Hunter. Uh, hits the free throw at six seconds left. And then Oklahoma comes down and gets a good look at the layup, but just can't get it to go. And Texas wins 85-83. Uh, Teddy Allen had 15. Marcus Carr, 17 points, even though he didn't shoot well. But yeah, Texas had a really good year. They're sixth right now um, in the country. Um, their coach, can't talk about him, but talk about the team itself. They got Marcus Carr. Teddy Allen is a bucket getter. Uh, D. Susan Sally hit a Bryce off the bench who had 24 points. Um, yeah, really good win for Texas and Oklahoma. Were a really good fight, but they just couldn't get, didn't have enough. Um, now they dropped to under 500. Um, then Baylor and Kansas, the big game of the day. Two top 10 teams going at it. Um, Baylor was in control really in the first half. You know, uh, Keontae George, um, Adam Flagler were really in control of this game. Up 45-32 at halftime, but then the second half happens. Then Kansas takes over. Kansas takes over in the second half. Um, they they just yeah they caught fire. Um, they scored the first ten points of the half to make it a three point game. Um, and then with fourteen twenty eleven Brady Dick a three pointer to take the lead. And from that point on, they just didn't they didn't let up. You know, from that point where uh, Grady Dick hit that three pointer to take the lead. Kansas goes on a 19 to 5 run to make it a 12 point game in just four minutes, and then yeah, they just didn't look back and they win 87 to 71, a big win for Kansas. Uh, Jalen Wilson, 21 and 13, he's been amazing this season. 
KJ Adams has 17. Grady Dick has 16 points. Uh, Dewan Harris um, had 14 and 9 assists. He's been playing very good. And yeah, Kansas is a really tough team, man. I really like Kansas. They got a lot of wings that can do a lot. Jalen Wilson's been really good. Grady Dick is a bucket getter. KJ Adams is really good on both ends. They got Dewan Harris, who was on the championship team from last year. Um, that's a really steady point guard. Yeah, big win for Kansas. Um, for Baylor, Adam Flagler had 22 and 7 assists. Keontae George at 20. I really like Keontae George. Um, he's a bucket getter as well. Um, but yeah, really good win for Kansas. Baylor stuck in there, but the second half, man, Kansas really just took over. Um, some other games, the number one team in the nation, Alabama, beat Georgia by 40. <laughs> Almost 50. They won 108 to 59. Brandon Miller finished with 21 points. He's another guy that's projected to go really high in the draft. Um, and yeah, today we got some good college games as well. Um, Ohio State and Purdue are playing right now. UNC and North Carolina State are playing right now. Um, yeah, very excited um, to watch those games, especially Purdue. And then North, the North Carolina North Carolina State game should be really good. Uh, North Carolina's got some really good players. I like to see. I like RJ. Davis and Caleb Lowe, Mirando ba uh, Baycott. Um, and the North Carolina State's been very good this year as well, so I'm really excited to see that game. Uh, and then tonight, three well, not tonight, but 3 o'clock, we got Houston and Memphis playing. Really like to watch Houston play. They have a really, really good team. Um, But, yeah, I think that's it, pretty much. So, yeah, that's it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.